Seems like these years just keep flying by. Like, I can't believe it's Resurrection Sunday already. We're here already. Wow, it just keeps flying by. Um, wow. Brother, what's your name again? I forgot your name. Yeah, you. Yeah, what's your name? Tom. Tom, could you come see me after the service? I got a, a request of you, if, if I could. Uh, Tom's a banjo player. I, I, I have a thought in my head. <laughs> I have a thought in my head. See if he's up for it. I could hear a banjo player back there somewhere. But, uh, yeah. If it was up to me, we'd have 40, 50 people up there. I just love uh, just the family of God. Wow. Awesome. And, uh, and, and, and your, your name again, brother? Um, your name again? What's your name again? Yeah, you? Dale. Dale. Now, you do puppets, right, Dale? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> That's what I do to new faces. <laughs> puppets. I can see puppets up here, too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. If you're visiting Club Zion, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it's very simple. It, it's, we love Jesus. That's it. Um, and um, we make no bones about it. It's just, it's all about Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we, we come into the season here, and it's our time of remembering what happened on the cross. We remember uh, what happened when the women came to uh, the grave site. Uh, but I want to just... Go backwards a little bit, and it says in Luke chapter 22, verse 47, And while he was still speaking, behold, a multitude, and he who is called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near to Jesus and kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? And, and backing up way before the crucifixion, before the resurrection, we have this event taking place way before that where we have a friend of Jesus, a friend. Not just a friend, but a long-time companion, uh, three years walking, ministering alongside him, seeing the miracles, seeing the wonders, hearing the amazing teachings through the scriptures and how Jesus would un unfold himself through the scriptures. And this, this man who just was immersed in Jesus Christ himself, the Lord of compassion, the Lord of love, the Lord of, of graciousness. We see here, here he is, and he's betraying the Lord. But he's not just betraying the Lord. He sold him out for 30 pieces of silver, which is an incredible thing uh, when you look at the context of the, the, the times, the culture, and the events that were taking place is that in those days, if you were to purchase a slave, you would pay 30 pieces of silver. That was the price of a slave. A slave was 30 pieces of silver. And here is Judas selling out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And he goes up to him and he kisses him. And I don't know how he thinks that he can get away with this. I mean, uh, he... he he thinks that he could just greet Jesus like he always does. And, they, and back in that culture, they would greet each other with a kiss. And he greets him so that the soldiers know which one is Jesus. And that just tells you how, how, what a common man Jesus was. It wasn't like he stood out glowing. He was just a common guy. And so he betrays him with this kiss and gives him this kiss. And I think he believes in his heart somehow that Jesus is never going to know what's going on. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? And, and here's the most amazing part about Jesus responding to him, because ultimately what Jesus is literally saying to him is, Judas, 
Are you betraying the Savior? And it says that after this, Judas went and hung himself. I guess so. I guess so. Uh, he, he, it's just amazing. And what is amazing about this is you could preach the gospel to the cows, come home, and there are some people that just don't want to have anything to do with it. I, I, you know, it, it's good. For, I'm happy that you're happy, but I don't want to hear your Jesus stuff. You know, I don't need you to be preaching Jesus to me. You're always preaching about Jesus. You're always bringing up that Jesus stuff. Yeah? I mean, think about it. Think about why we bring up the Jesus stuff over and over again. You know, you might be here today because it's, it's Resurrection Sunday, and because it's Resurrection Sunday, and your mom is, goes to church, and she's always preaching Jesus, so you're, you're here because it's a special day. And your mom said, well, can you just at least come on Easter, right? None of you, of course, but some people are like that. So why, why do you have to always be talking about Jesus? There's something that happens to a person when the lights go on. Something happens. There's something that's supernatural that takes place when your heart completely, totally, no doubt about it, believes that Jesus not only is who he is, but that he loved you so much that he came into your life to rescue you. Something that happens supernaturally to your spirit occurs in your being when, when you come to that understanding. And when you come to that understanding, you can't shut up. You just can't shut up. It's all about Jesus. Like, well, yeah, yeah. Um, Let me just put it in, um, in another way. Now, how many people are into fishing? Anybody like fishing? Okay, a couple people. How many people like football? More people like football. How many people like hockey? Um, surfing. How many people like surfing? Well, that's a good crowd. I'll go with surfing. <laughs> let's just say, let's just say, you have been surfing for, say, five or six years, and you're starting to get pretty good. And anyone that knows surfing is, every time you go out in the water, you have about a 8% chance of catching a good wave. Because they're unpredictable, it's sometimes it's sloppy, sometimes you're not in the right lineup, something, you don't always catch that wave, right? You don't always get that wow. But on that one day, if you're a surfer and you went out on that one day, and it was a day you'll never forget, the lineup, the wave, the conditions, the temperature of the water, everything was flawlessly perfect. You know that even to this day, you can't shut up about that wave. You just can't. I have my day. It was a, I'll never forget, it was, it was 1980s. I don't know the exact day in 1980, but it was a Wednesday. Uh, it was right before Thanksgiving. It was a, a, a swell that came out of nowhere, and I'll never forget that wave ever. It was like it had to be three feet overhead. It was glassy. I was in the perfect lineup. Come down the set. Here I am right there, and I'm, my finger is dragging to this glassy wave, and I'm just going. And I'm like, wow. And I can't shut up about it. All these years, I was still talking about it. So in that same sense, it's like you know, fishermen. You caught that, that one. You know, you got that one fish that you'll never forget. It was a record. It was perfect. And you keep talking about it. Well, that's a, that's a, a pale example of what it's like when you run into Jesus Christ. That pales because when you find that there is a real, honest-to-goodness God of all creation that saved your life and you didn't deserve it, what takes place inside of your heart is you now have a superhero. And, and if Jesus wore a cape, you'd walk around with a cape all day. 
just to try to be like him because he's your superhero. He's the guy, the main guy. And I believe that for Judas, that never occurred. For Judas, it was a religious thing. And he liked being a part of all the excitement and he liked being a part of all the action and the miracles and he liked being associated to one of the the 12 guys, one of the main dudes. But it never really went in, hit the heart and exploded. It never happened to him. And if it did happen to him, there's no way that he could ever betray the Lord. I know a lot of Christians that, that for, for real, it's gone down and it's hit the heart. And I know those believers. And they would die for the cross. They would go to their death for the cross. Death is, a, uh, is victory for a Christian. To live is Christ, to die is gain. And so we have this event that takes place before all this goes on, and it makes me think about the people in this world, how they just, they don't want to hear about this Jesus stuff, and the reason is, is that it hasn't gone down into the heart and it exploded into their lives yet, and as Christians, as believers, please, I implore you to be patient with them, just be patient. Don't get all aggro because they're not where you want them to be. Don't be all up in their face because they're not listening to every word you have to say. Just be patient with them and be loving. Uh, Don't give up on them. Pray for them. Uh, Don't take it personal. They're just not there yet. It hasn't got down in there. It hasn't boom. So be patient. And So I wanted to start out uh, the service helping you to be kind, be affectionate, be loving, be supportive. Pray for those who you are burdened for. Pray for the lost. Uh, And try not to ram Jesus down their throat. Uh, It's much easier to eat pudding than it is to eat a whole piece of steak unchewed. So give them pudding. (laughs) You know, The Lord describes it as giving them milk first and not meat. Uh, You know, they might not have spiritual teeth to chew down on all that goody stuff. So I just want to encourage you as uh, we get started into the service to be patient with those who you desire to get fired up about Jesus. Now, um, how many do we have here that would consider yourself A real fired up Jesus freak. Stay away from those people. (laughs) They will wear you out. (laughs) Just kidding. Get to know them. They know something. They know something very special. So I want to go fast forward a little bit um, to... Luke chapter 24, verse 1 through 6. Um, And it says, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, very early in the morning, first day of the week, very early in the morning, and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And then when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? So that's where we get our sunrise service from. Uh, That's why we do sunrise services, because of it's the remembrance of what took place back for the resurrection. So here we have Jesus dies on the Passover, and three days later the women come to the tomb, 
and they come to the tomb to anoint the body uh, for burial. Uh, they bring the spices and stuff, and they, they, they just cover the, bi- the body with those spices, and, uh, you know, they mourn, and they, they pray, and they, they say goodbye to the body. And so they're coming to the tomb to prepare the body for death and closure. So they get there. They get there. Now, who are these women? These are the women that followed Jesus and was with him for all these years, cared for him, wept. Women that uh, had a deep, deep spiritual relationship. And so they come to this tomb, and, and you can imagine the burden, the pain, the sorrow. And they're not sure what happened. You know, Jesus was supposed to come into the city and be their king. Jesus was supposed to come into the city and, and be the king of Israel, the king of the Jews. And now he's dead. He's in a tomb, and they're not sure what's going on. And so they come to this site to, to put closure on it. And when they get there, there's two men standing by the tomb with shining clothes. Now, what do you think shining clothes? clothes would look like? Anybody have an idea what shining clothes would look like? Um, uh, Let me just put it this way. I have a friend of mine, George Waters. Anybody know George Waters? He's a good friend of mine. I've known him since the 80s. We were were in Christian rock bands together, and he's a great singer. He can play any instrument you put in his hands, and great guy. And he invited me over to his house for a Christmas party one time. And so we go to the Christmas party that uh, that he had at his house, and it was just a few people, maybe 10 people. And uh, all of a sudden, we're asked to go outside. Everybody come outside. And so we all go outside. He had wrapped himself completely in Christmas lights. His His legs, his body, his arms, his head, he wrapped himself in Christmas lights, and he's out in his yard on the trampoline. And he's going, and this is what I would think the shining clothes would look like. It's like, wow, because when we went outside, all we could all do is go, wow. And he's like, George is like six foot four inches tall, and he probably weighs 250 pounds. So this guy is jumping on a trampoline, wrapped in Christmas lights, and, and I'm like, shining clothes. He's got shining clothes. So it would have to be they were, they were wearing something that made them go, wow, fall to the ground and bury their faces in the dirt in just complete awe. And here they are. And so the, the guys with shining clothes, angels, at the tomb, that's empty, that they saw was empty with the stone rolled away and with them with the burial incense, are, are got their faces to the ground, and all of a sudden they hear the voice of the angel say, what are you doing here? There's no dead people here. Why are you here? And the angel, in saying this, uh, would have to be reminding them of what Jesus already told them. Jesus told them that he was going to raise from the dead. He's not here. He is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee? Remember, girls? Remember he said he was going to raise from the grave? So what happens? These ladies run back to the upper room where all the guys are hanging out, believing that Jesus is dead. They're not at the tomb. Sometimes women can be a lot more sensitive than guys. I don't know what they were back in the upper room doing, playing poker or something. But they're back in the upper room. And they run back and say, hey, he's risen. And so they tell the guys the whole story about the tomb. And what do they do? They don't believe him. They don't believe him. Ah, get out of here. Now, the tomb... It says that the stone was rolled away. Now, this stone that is rolled away is not something that the women could move. I mean, this is a serious stone. It has to be moved with leverage, with, with, 
with big poles and leverage, and you have to have men to stabilize it as it rolls away. It's not like they remove the body. Uh, that's another miracle about this uh, resurrection. So they don't believe. So here we have, after the event, two of the people that were in the upper room that heard the ladies tell the story, they're heading back home. They're traveling down the road. They're just having a good time. Jesus, risen, shows up and starts hanging out with them on the road. And so Jesus says to him, what are you guys arguing about? What is, what's this discord going on? Are you guys okay? What's going on? And I can only imagine that they were, that they were talking about the, the women coming to the tomb. Did Jesus raise from the grave? No, he didn't. How could he raise from the grave? You know, he's dead. And, and man, you know, we thought we were there and we're not there. And whatever they were talking about, Jesus shows up and goes, hey, what are you guys doing? What are you arguing about? And they turn to Jesus and they say, haven't you heard? Everybody knows. And Jesus says to him, no, I haven't heard. Tell me all about it. This is, a, this is what happened. Isn't the Lord cool? Yeah, amen. No, why don't you guys tell me what happened? So they tell the Lord what happened, and then the Lord starts to open up the scriptures to them. And he's really opening up the scriptures and showing them him. He's, he's unfolding the scriptures to them as they're walking. So they get to their destination, and and they say to Jesus, listen, it's getting dark. Why don't you come in and spend the night with us? Ah, okay. They come in and eat. So they come in and eat. And J Jesus breaks the bread at the dinner table. And it says when he broke the bread, their eyes were open and they knew it was Jesus. They were like, it's the Lord. But then he, he vanished. He went away. But here's the killer part of that story that I love. And that's this. Here's the, here's the punchline of the whole story about these two guys. One of them says to the other one, he goes, didn't our hearts burn within us when he unfolded the scriptures? That's what he said. Didn't our hearts burn within us when he opened the scriptures? It, see, it didn't click for them. But then when God opened their eyes and broke the bread and said, boom, take a look at this, they were like, oh, no. That was him he was talking about on the road. That was him in the scriptures. That was Jesus. That's the Savior. He's alive. He's risen. They were blown away. Blown away. Wow. When the Lord opens your eyes and allows you to see him, and he gets down inside, and ba-boom, and that spark is ignited, and now you're some kind of a Jesus freak and you can't shut up about Jesus? Be patient because not everybody is where you're at. And it's not that you're more special than anyone. You're not. It's just that the timing is different for them than it is for you. And so I encourage you to be patient and I also encourage you, those of you who are sick and tired of them preaching Jesus all day, that you might have a little compassion for them because they just happen to be fired up. They have a hero they've discovered, and they're pumped. Yeah. So next time they're like, oh, Jesus stuff, Jesus stuff, the next time, just go like this to them. Right on, Mom. <laughs> right on. You stand up for your God. So, you know, cheer them on. Give them, give them a little credit there, okay? Um, so I just wanted to share that uh, little tidbit there. It's an odd, uh, yeah, you know, Resurrection Day sermon. But I just, I know that sometimes uh, you holy rollers can get a little out of hand, you know. I know, because I'm around you guys, you know. And... Uh, I get to get out of hand every Sunday and Tuesday night, so, I mean, I could just preach Jesus all I want right here. So, I have an outlet. So, you guys that uh, are sick and tired of mom and dad preaching Jesus, or you mom and dads that are sick of your kids preaching Jesus, 
give them a little space, you know, like, okay, all right, we get it. You got a hero, wonderful. I'm not on the team yet, but I'm, I'm thinking about it. All right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Now, with that said, who wants to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and get saved on Resurrection Sunday? Who wants to do that? Anybody want to get saved this morning? Just you want to invite Jesus into your heart. You want to go down and go, ba-boom. Who wants that this morning? Just put your hand up and go, I do. Well, listen, when someone offers you the best deal of a lifetime, the thing you should do is like, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, how much do I got to pay? Nothing. It's free. You can have it. Yeah. yeah, pick me. Very good. Nathan, I see your hand up. Anybody else? Come on. Bring it on. Yeah, yeah. It's like, who wants $2 billion? <laughs> who would like to have $2 billion? Yeah, then their hands go up, right? Jesus is worth more than $2 billion, believe me. Just go for it. All right, let's pray. Father, I just pray that you would uh, hear the heart of those who want to see you, feel you, and li have you live inside of them. Lord, they've, they've raised their hand because they want to be closer to you. So, Lord, I pray that you hear their heart, that you'd forgive them, cleanse them, purify them, fill them with the Holy Spirit, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that you will just continue to strengthen them and groom them in your word, that they not only would know you on a, on a level in church, but they would know you deep in their heart as you minister your word into them, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your word, Lord, to remind us to be patient with those that we burden for. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand for a closing song.